King's debut too. <laughs> I'm dead. All right, man. All right, man. It's your boy Sam. Um, I am Tokyo Yao. Oh, I, I gotta say my name too. Oh yeah, special guest, special guest. Oh, special guest Nick, or you know, tropical on Instagram. Shoot, shoot. The Creators so. Club podcast. All right. How's everybody's week, man? It's pretty good. You know, can't complain about too much. It's been a sunny weekend. Today's nice outside and all that. So yeah, good overall. How about y'all. I mean, it was, it was a, I mean, it was a long week, but I thought the weekend definitely helped. Yeah. I had a good, uh, good weekend, weekend. Just been working. Just doing a lot of little shoots and projects here and there. But you'll, you'll see. You'll see. Definitely, definitely. So, so, so that's what we like to hear. Definitely, definitely. Um, so we have some new music this week, right? Yeah, a lot of new music. Yeah. Well, oh, well, you said John Blood Drop. I haven't listened to that yet, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. And I know he had like a lot of features on it. Drake's on it. Yeah. Um, Travis is on it. Travis right? is on it. Yeah. yeah. I think he got Big Sean too. I think. Oh, yeah. 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 A little dirt too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, a little dirt. Yeah. Pops up on the song, you know, it's going to be good. How do y'all feel about that though? Do y'all like when like artists do that when they have like a lot of features on their albums like that? Or would you prefer your artist like or you're like an artist that you're into to have like a solo album, like a J. Cole type thing? Um, I feel like I feel like it depends. I think I think if you've been away for so long, then maybe it's like, yeah, I would kinda wanna hear you. Before like you just pop out like hella features and stuff like that, but I think it depends. It, I think it depends on the artist and also like how long you've been away and like the time between your last project and now. Yeah, like I feel like someone like Drake dropped like a project with a bunch of people. I'm not gonna be mad because I know the next album's coming like pretty much like right after that. Right. And I feel like this whatever young but project it was like a label like compilation, so it was kind of different. So they're gonna have like their their artists and like also like other people that they collaborate with often. So right. Oh, so this was this was a label project. I think so. Let me, let me see. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I thought this was I thought this was like one of his series of projects. It um, says it says young under under artists, it says young stoner life, young bug and gunner. So yeah. Either a compilation or like it's a joint project with him and Gunner and Young. Yeah. Okay. Actually, no, no, it is a compilation. Yeah. Okay. What have y'all been? Um, have y'all caught the the white boy summer with Chan Hicks? Yo, Chan. Yo, Chan's wild. Chan's wild. Uh. Yeah, there's nothing more to say. Chess Wild. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder, I'm like, what is what is what is bad? Like, what does Tom Hanks think? Like, like this is what it's I, like. What is that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I I like the energy. I do feel like it's about to be a wild summer. It is a summer. Be bad. I don't know if it's about to be a white boy summer. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, but it's about to be good times. Definitely. Yeah, nah, definitely gonna be a great summer. Though. Vaccinated, yeah. you know, we outside. Yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking of, get your vaccines, everyone. Please. Taking my first vaccine. Yeah. You know. But not a, uh, you know, stay clear of the Johnson and Johnson one. Yeah, yeah, yeah except for that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, Moderna, Pfizer, go ahead. You know, I need my coin for that too, y'all. Like this. Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> It's no free promo out here. <laughs> nah, like high key. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But oh, it's been it's been a loaded week, actually. I it's feel like um, something else that you know is kind of that came out was like Adam Toledo and like the body cam footage. Yeah, um, that was crazy. Yeah, did you did you see that, Nick? It was a uh, what was it? What happened? The you know the uh, the Hispanic kid and Adam Toledo. I don't, I don't what what state was state with this? So it was in Chicago. It was in Illinois, yeah. right? Um, and what happened was. Uh, police were responding to shots fired and all that, right? Yeah. Um, this kid came out. You know, he has his hands up. He's standing next to a fence. Now, they say that he threw a gun beforehand, but the video shows, you know, him with his hands up. And the cop says that he got scared. He thought that he had a gun on him and wow. shot him. Uh, and killed him 13 year old wow yeah Jeez. So, it's just getting it's worse out here yeah yeah it wasn't like it wasn't like uh like a military guy stopped and like yeah ace and all that like it's like this week too or something yeah yeah in Virginia. yeah yeah that well so that video came out or it went viral this week but it actually happened in december Oh dang! Um, Crazy. Yeah, yeah. We had that, but um, there was There's also the other the viral video of walking the, in the neighborhood. The drill sergeant, yeah, the drill sergeant saying that the, the kid couldn't, he didn't live there in that neighborhood. Right, and then yeah. asking like where he lived, or like he had to like sit there and present it himself until you told him. Oh, it was the, it was the um, I think I saw that one. That guy was like, they were just in like a regular neighborhood, like, and he was like talking or something. And he's like, why can't I be yeah. here? I live here. Yeah. yeah, which he actually uh he got fired. He got fired, um, yeah. Well, not fired, but he got discharged, he discharged um, from the military for that. Um, which I mean, uh, it's karma. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll feel bad for you. No, nah, I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> like, <nah. laughs> Just don't be racist. Exactly. exactly. No, it, it could be so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really simple. Just don't be just don't be a bad human being. Yeah, just you know, be like, <laughs> That's wild though. People really be like, yeah, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, something that I something that I saw this morning or whatever I was going through like Instagram and it was Chris Como and he was saying that like police reform won't happen until white people's kids start getting killed. Like, they're not going to start caring until, and I'm yeah. just, yeah, that's dead ass. Facts. Yeah. They're not ready for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's sad. It's like, I don't know if y'all have ever seen that movie, uh, A Time to Kill. It's uh, with Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I thought that was like, that's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, long story. Sorry, all right, all right, short synopsis. Um, his daughter gets raped by these two white people. Oh, I have seen that. Yeah, they're going through the trial, and he um, he goes off, and I, I think he killed he killed the two white people. Right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a moment in the trial where, um, and Samuel L. Jackson is on trial right now, but Matthew McConaughey is his lawyer. There's a moment in the trial where um, Matthew McConaughey is explaining what happened, right? And he asks the jury and every want to close their eyes, right? And he's describing the events, right? And he's like, all right, now imagine if, you know, the little girl was white. Yeah. Right, and I think that's that's what, you know, some white Americans have to do. Like they have to literally, if you can't empathize with it, then you don't see any problem with it. You know, I don't know if y'all heard Brett Favre's comments on uh, basically, what he called politics and all that, like putting politics in sports and all that. But it's like, if you can't empathize with that, right, then you don't see a need to make a change. Exactly. Right? You don't see, it doesn't affect you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it is, it's probably going to take that. And that's, yeah. that's sad. But it's showing. I hope it doesn't come down to that. But. We're already, Minnesota is like, it's going to be forever at war. Like, yeah. Think. Minnesota. What's happening in Minnesota? Um, I forgot about that. Another, another, another shooting. Dwayne. 
Dante. Uh, Dante. Yeah. Um, I'm forgetting his last name, but uh, he another unarmed black man being shot by a police officer on top. And during you know the week in which they're having the trial for Derek Chauvin, who was the person that killed George Floyd, Dante, right? Yeah. Right. And Minnesota is just, I mean, like. Yeah. What three years ago they had Philando Castillo. Philando you know, Castillo. Then we had George Floyd. Yeah, and so, now Dante. It's like it's a repeating cycle. So it's, yeah, no. And Minnesota might be on my don't go, don't go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't even pass through this. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was on Clubhouse with uh, this lady. Um, she was from uh, East Africa, but she. I just relocated over here and she was talking about she relocated to Minnesota. She was talking about how bad it was, like um racially. Like she she had had racial confrontations with people already. I mean she you know, she'd only been here for like two years or something like that. And wow. So, yeah. So I mean it's yeah, so certain, like, certain regions of the country are just, you know, it's not it's not safe for uh our kind, I guess. No. Which is sad. It wasn't built for us, so. Yeah. That's true. Gee. That's crazy, though. Like, it's just, because, like, living here, like, PG, Howard, yeah. like, you wouldn't really be like, you, you wouldn't think that, you know? But, like, I, I think PG's what, like, the, the wealthiest predominantly black county in, like, the entire U.S.? Yeah. 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 So, Yeah, I mean, Howard County is diverse, but we still have, like, underlying racial issues and stuff like that. Like, it's always been like that. Yeah. It's just not as talked about as much. That's true. Because I remember uh, I was surprised when, uh, what, Kung Fu Tea got, like, a rock thrown. Yeah, I saw that. That was crazy, bro. Yeah. Wait, sorry, what happened? Um... This this Asian like restaurant like by Columbia Mall got it vandalized like February or March or what? I think it's March. Got yeah, yeah, March. Yeah. Got vandalized along with a lot of other businesses and stuff like that. That's like part of the Asian hate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just need to stop hate all around. It just it just doesn't make sense, any sense. Why you should hate anyone for the color of the skin? No, no. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't make sense. I just never understood, like, what does that do for you? Like, yeah, like, what do you gain? What do you literally gain from that? (laughs) Yeah, like, what (laughs) do you get joy from that? Like, what, how (laughs) does it put like money in your account? (laughs) Does it? (laughs) But I think it's a power thing, you know, like, the. The dude and uh, with those military girls like you know, talking to the kid that way, right? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a kid passing through your neighborhood, even if he doesn't live there. Like, why else would you be out there screaming at a child, pushing them, and all that? You know, if it's yeah. not a power dynamic. But uh, no, it's it's that sense of. I'm better than you because of my skin color. Right. Uh, yeah. it's, it's nonsense. And they'll still use the excuse, oh no, nah, I'm not I'm not racist. I have black friends. Uh, uh, uh. My ex is black. Yeah. Nah. Nah. I think Shannon Sharp said it that you, you know black people, you don't have black friends. Dude. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You don't get brownie yeah. points, like yeah, nah. <laughs> nah. So Nate, you do photography, right? Yeah, photography. Um, getting a little back into videography and um, branching out to a lot of little other things, but we'll get into that later. You know. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. But How'd you yeah, get into? Sorry, what was that? No, I was saying yeah, but definitely photography is definitely one of my main things. Okay. How'd you How'd you get into that? Um. Honestly. 
uh, I think I was just like working at Paxson with one of my friends. And then he was like, hey, you wanna go shoot? Um, and I recently bought a camera, but like to film like short videos and stuff. Um, so we go out and shoot with like, like our phones and like we started doing like a weekly shoot. And then I was like, let me just bring my camera and then kind of just, just Working build up from there. Yeah. That's what's up. That's so, tight. Yeah. Uh, how many how many years have you been doing like photography and so? Uh, I would say it's like photography, like three, four years now, maybe five. Okay. Um, uh, video stuff, I like did like seven, six. Um, but yeah, now photography, it's like, it's definitely always fun and interesting because like, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into it and then, you know, a lot of different like ways to shoot, uh, styles of shooting, things that you can like do in post, you know, trying to get the perfect shot right then and there. It's like a lot of different like ways to go about it. So would you say that you've like developed your own style right now with that, like your own niche of, of uh, style of taking pictures or to the style of uh, being a videographer? Yeah. I will but, see. Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. What are you gonna say? Oh, no, I was just gonna follow up to that. So like, you know, what would you, what would you uh, describe that as? Or how would you classify that? Uh, like my style of shooting? Um. See, I'm not like, I'm still trying to find like, my exact niche with it um, a little bit, but like, I do have those like uh, inspirations. Uh, probably like fashion photography is a little bit inspired right there. And then a little bit of a, you know, just like creative um, ideas, like, you know, having more than one, say, I, like I took a picture of you and I had like two of you in the same photo, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Um, even just uh, doing like post stuff with in post, like making the picture look like it's a, a ripped piece of paper or make it even look like it's it was taken on a film camera and stuff like that. That Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. it does. So, so you do the editing aspect as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've been getting more into that recently. That's what's up. So, so uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, how where the like, music I guess if you were artists I'd be like you know what what are, who are your influences um yeah in what, so yeah, what photographers yeah. are, like would you look up to yeah um so right now there's a uh, Rolex she's uh she does pictures for Bryson and Taylor okay. um and then uh the photographer for Brent Fias and then I a little bit of Gunner Stahl. You know, those are those are probably the people that I I look up to, or I mean, not look up to, just I'm a little inspired by. Um, I try to do something similar to, but it it was interesting that you said music because like I'm more inspired by visuals from artists. From art. and, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. uh, so those are also some of like your favorite artists too, then. Right, like Brent and, and uh, Bryson. Bryson. Yeah, Bryson. Yeah, I don't know why, but not everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, okay. So, do you, you, my bad, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, how would you like describe your your, your photogra photography style, like when you're shooting? Um, In what way? Like, um, just like how you develop like your pictures and stuff like that. I try to, well, sometimes I try to make it look like it was shot on film. Um, I guess that would be the best way or like, I try to make it look like it's, it's older than what it, it was actually shot on. Um, or just like a, I forget the word. Like a retro. Yeah. yeah like kind of like retro. Yeah. What exactly is the difference between like film, uh, film photography and digital photography? Because I've heard a lot of like people who are into photography talk about yeah. that, but I don't really understand um, what the difference is. Right? So I'm a little, I'm a little new to it. Like the like 
uh, the, the differences, but I can clear, like, I feel like it's more just like the lighting and the way the light is shown like in the pictures and the way the light comes out. Cause I feel like with film, you, you get the, you capture the light better. Cause I mean, photography is pretty much just, you know, light. light. Yeah. Um, and I feel like with digitally, you can't get the same, like the same looks. Like sometimes like with a film camera, you'll get like that soft light look like in the photo. I wish I could like put examples up, but. Um, so, so then why would, uh, why would, why would a photographer uh, go for digital versus, versus film? Uh, I think because I feel like film is really hard to be honest because you know uh, depending on the film camera I'm pretty sure like you're not even seeing that photo which like you're, you're just looking through the viewfinder you're taking it and then just you got to get developed and that's it could be like it could be trash or like you know film you didn't process it right stuff like that because right. um, I have a film camera I, I had did like a whole shoot and then came back and I put the film in wrong. Everything was black. Oh, <laughs> got nothing oh, out of it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> that's down to frustrating. It was like the worst feeling. I was like, and, and, and it's money too, because you gotta like, you pay for it to get developed too. So right. Yeah. Right. really expensive. Yeah. So I think like, I feel like a reason why some people would just go with a digital and like try to edit it is because you know you get to see the photo, what it already looks like, add to it, and then you don't have to pay to get the photos, you know, developed. You, you just have them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, do you sense like what do you think industry is going with that with um, digital versus versus film? Do right? you think uh, more people are gonna, because obviously film creates an aesthetic that's not recreated. Um, yeah. No, that's not be uh, able to be easily duplicated by di digital film, right? But digital, like you said, it's more, um, it's more accessible. It's easy to use. Um, yeah. Where do you think the industry is headed in that sense? Do you think people are going, you know, more in the direction of film or um more towards digital i think i think everybody's well from what i've seen i think people are going more towards film because it just it does create those aesthetics that you can't really you know you can try to you know recreate them but like at the end of the day like there's just some things that you can't um and then i noticed like uh i think travis scott photographer he does a lot of like film um and then there's a few other people that I was like, you know, entertainment photographers that like, they're mostly shooting on film. Um, and it's just like aesthetics that are really hard to like really recreate. Like you can, but it's just like, it's not the same. But that at the end of the day, that could just be a trend, but it's also, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be really cool if, you know, someone were to invent a camera that, that kind of like crossed both worlds, but I, I get yeah. that would probably be hard to do. It it's is. literally how the um, the camera captures light, right? So, yeah. yeah. It's tough, though. What is uh, what's your favorite thing about being a photographer? Uh, my favorite thing is probably just uh you know that moment when you like you're 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 just in the in that moment and you're taking that that one photo Good. and then you get that picture that you didn't even like expect to get you get that right angle and you're just like this is amazing Good. and then you show like you show the person you took the picture of and they're like wow like i didn't even know i could look like that yeah. How do you uh, uh, yeah. do, uh sorry, Brian. No, no, you got it here. Uh, I was just gonna say how, how do you like typically interact with creatives and um booking shoots and stuff like that? 
Um, uh, honestly, it's, it's pretty chill. I just like the, you know, I always just bring my speaker. Um, we talk for a little bit, like right before. Um, usually talk like in between uh, takes and uh, and shots. Um, and honestly, it's, I usually enjoy it because I also just feel like it's like a good time to just get to know or like, you know, kick back or just uh, catch up with someone, you know. Or even just like shoot ideas off each other. Do you do more like, uh, like natural photography, natural element photography, or is it more like in studio work? So at the moment, I've just been doing more like natural, like um, outside uh, shoots, because that's like what I can really do. I don't, I do want to set up a studio at some point and, you know, do some real crazy creative ideas. Um, but even like with outside, I'm, I've been trying to like branch out and do some like really crazy things with that. You know, some things you wouldn't expect. But like, yeah, I, I guess natural would be uh, more of what I do right now. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? the how do you think the pandemic has affected like photographers and, and people that work in on that uh in that side of the art um honestly it depends i know how it affected me um yeah because i was planning on doing like when you know concerts were still happening i was planning on doing some shoots at concerts you know trying to like take pictures of artists um and just get out there more into like, you know, that kind of community or just like general, like, you know, group of people, like just like get, get in, like get around more creative people. Um, but I know some people, uh, they've been just fine. They still get flown out. They just have to, you know, get tested every now and then. So really, I feel like it just depends on the person. Maybe it does. It made things a little slower for some people. Um, just because, you know, some people don't want to come out the house, some people don't want to go out and shoot um, until, like, the pandemic's over. Um, but I feel like that's probably just, like, a person-to-person -person thing uh, based on who you are and, like, what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah, I saw this uh, thing on, back when, this is back when the pandemic first started. I, I saw this uh, news story where, like, there's this photographer and Obviously, this was a time when like people were really apprehensive about going out and having contact and all that. Yeah. But what he would do is he would kind of have people take their own picture, but he would guide them like through like FaceTime or through Zoom. And oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, that's yeah. Um, that's tight though. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know how 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 it come up, but. Yeah. I feel like I feel like photographers. I mean, if you you know, y'all know how to direct you know a shot angle and stuff like that. So that was it's, I thought that was really cool to see. But it's gonna be interesting to see how stuff moves uh, um, past the pandemic. You know, like if people still do stuff like that because it's yeah. You know, you know, I, yeah, that is one thing though. I, I do feel like the pandemic did really force like a lot of people to just like get creative and like, you know, do things a different way or a new way or just a easier, late, more laid back way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it even encouraged people to like even pick up stuff like photography or music or, you know, and just whether it was a hobby or, you know, Something that you wanted to get into, like you know, for like I was for us, we started the podcast, you know, and like I think it allowed a lot of a lot of people to like tap into those creative juices and creative energies. So, yeah, no, I, when I saw you guys had a podcast, I was like, no, that's awesome. Like, you know, just getting creative, like you know, you're still using that time to create something. You know? Yeah, definitely.
what's uh what's your favorite part of the, the creative process that's, that's a or uh, it's when i like you know i guess i get that idea and then you know just planning it out and you know trying to execute the idea and then once you execute the idea you get something that's like you know, not every time you get something better than what you wanted but like you know sometimes you'll get something like way better than what you wanted like i think uh, recently i just did a shoot where like the concept was going to be like uh every angle like i was gonna i was gonna leave the camera on a tripod um keep it there and then just have the model move like from different places to places like different from place to place and then um i was gonna put all the pictures together so there'd be like 10 or like seven of her in the same photo Dope. and i just finished editing them and they just it came out like way better than i thought it would like it's it's crazy uh so that's probably the best part do you use like any like special software like Photoshop or anything like that to edit your pictures? Um yeah, right now I just use um, Photoshop, Lightroom, um, and for videos, Final Cut. That's yeah. all I'm using right now. What uh? How do you uh? How do you how do you know uh, a good lens from a bad lens? Right, or do you, um, like, uh, I know, I don't know much about cameras, but I know, like, lenses are pretty important sometimes to, like, capturing that, that perfect shot. Um, yeah. what's your, what's your experience with, like, choosing out lenses and, um, how do you approach that? Um, I wouldn't say there's, there's bad lenses. Uh, it really just depends on your camera and, like, what you, what you need. Um, for me, I usually, um, which I need to stop doing, I usually buy lenses that are really, really close up because I like a lot of like detail um, for some pictures, but then uh, it's really just what you need for that shoot and like the, the specs that go into it, like the quality that you want, um, what kind of look, because you can definitely get a lens and then I know there's lens filters and you could, you could definitely get that like false film look with soft light. Um, really my process is I just, you know, I spend like probably like a month or so just going through like what this lens can do compared to other lenses. Cause there's a lot of lenses that do the same thing. One's like $400 and one's like, you know, 60, 70 on eBay. It just really just depends on that. And you know, what can fit on your camera that's that's the that's where they get you like you know you could buy a lens and you didn't check it to fit on your camera and now you gotta spend like you know another 50 60 getting an adapter to, to put it on your camera <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's just it's an expensive uh, career saying, like, more... sorry go ahead. no i was just saying it's an expensive career slash hobby i think it like lagged out for a second right would you say like the more the more expensive the lens, the better, or um, purpose, depending on purpose? It depends on the purpose, and it also depends on the photographer. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's some people I know like they could take. Uh, you could give me the most expensive camera uh, right now, the most expensive lens, and you could you could get someone that was like you know expert photographer doing it for like twenty years. You can give them like my camera and you know we could come out with like the same quality photo or similar you know or they, they could get some some pictures that are just 10 times better than like what i took with their you know the super the most expensive camera right. it just it depends on you know what you know and what you can do with the camera really but What would you say is the hardest part about being a photographer? The hardest part? Yeah. Um, hardest part, I guess, would just be, well, for me, it's just uh, scheduling and then, like, you know, lighting. Uh, but once you get the hang of lighting, it's not that hard. It's just 
getting that right shot sometimes. So sometimes some days there's just you know you're gonna have off days or like you're just not getting a good shoot. Um, and like you know just getting discouraged too. That's probably one of the hardest parts. It's like some days I'll have a shoot and I'll be like, Bee. like none of these came out I wanted, you know. And I'll just you know I'll sit there and be like, do I even want to shoot anymore? But like it's really it's really you just gotta know like yeah some days gonna be like this you know uh, you just gotta keep keep going you know keep trying to get better. Okay. You have any like dream goals? I didn't hear. Uh, you have any like dream goals as far as like your photography like who you want? You say to goals? Yeah, like dream goals. Yeah. Um, goals would just be to you know get a get a little studio and then you know just shoot every day if I could you know uh if anybody had like a creative project they want to work on just just get it done have fun you know just remember just get, just get paid to, to shoot and you know shoot videos and stuff like that all day but uh I know you said like a lot of uh your inspirations are tied to like uh music artists and all that who are, who are some of the music artists that like you would uh, love to uh, be a photographer for or a videographer for like who you know who's your top three uh, top three that you, like to, um, that you would like to work with yeah. all right that's um i'd say bryson tiller for sure because that was like in high school, that was just all I listened to 24 <laughs> 7. Yeah. Um, yeah, Trap Soul was hard. <laughs> trap Soul was and so I, hard. <laughs> that's all that's, that is an album right there. You can listen to that, you know. Well, I, cannot, I feel like most people don't like listening to RB, you know, during the day. Yeah. But like, I listen to it any point in the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's nice. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Probably Brent Baez and I think last top three. You can do top five. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry. I was getting a call. Oh, no, you're good. Um, uh, top three. I said Bryce Tiller, Brent Baez. Probably uh, Six Lack. I know, I know his name's Black, but like, yeah. <laughs> um, Shmino, uh, that was three, that's four, or three, that's four. You can go to five, you can go to five. I, uh, maybe like, I don't know, someone. I think. I'm trying to throw someone different in there. Uh, and that's all that's all I got for right now. <laughs> so that's a good list. That's a lot of books. Yeah. Or maybe like ASAP. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> maybe you said ASAP. Yeah. 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 Yeah, is that a world that uh that you could see yourself getting into? Because I mean, obviously he's he's really into like fashion stuff right now. Um, yeah, is that something and that avenue that you would see yourself um, pursuing? Like fashion and stuff like that. Like uh, yeah, like fashion photography and you know the runways or model shoots and stuff like that. Nah, definitely. Because I definitely like um a lot of like really creative like model shoots um and stuff like that uh like uh i guess gq has some really like cool like photos um that they take like yearly and they're just like interesting and then uh i think the the picture of brad pitt i had up earlier in the background yeah, yeah like just weird stuff like that like you know just with a pig and a dress 
you know, but it was like the lighting was like crazy and the area was like amazing. But they were uh, just really interesting things that like make you think like, why do you do that? Like, why'd they take that picture? Like, I like the way it looks, but like, why? <laughs> You think it's hard for like a person of color to break into like an industry <laughs> like that, um, like photo the photography industry, or um, be it through any of those channels, fashion, um, music, you know, you think, like what do you what do you think that experience is like? What what has that experience been like for you? Um, I don't think I've had any like real you know issues like trying to break into those things uh i don't know i honestly don't even know how to how to answer that i think i i do think at some point so there's always going to be you know some difficulty for people of color just like who careers in general but like i feel like if you find the right avenue like you could you could be on a good place you you know you can, you can achieve everything you want to achieve, you know? Does that, does that answer the question properly? Yeah, it does. I was just wondering, because I know, like, some models, uh, models obviously, you know, sometimes have those hindrances because it, um, there may be, like, photo shoots or uh, um, certain looks that, you know, people are looking for to, to present, right? Yeah. But I just wonder what the other side of that is as well, you know, like, um, how it is for photographers looking for work, uh, whether it be freelance or, you know, doing, I think you're more of like creating your own atmosphere in your own world right now, right? So, but like what it is for like freelancers or you know, um, other avenues, but yeah, no, you answered that perfectly. Okay, okay. Um, Cause I, I know a lot of people that, um, I think my friend, I haven't heard from him in a minute, but I think last time I, I checked with him, he was shooting for bands. Um, and I think I think it was pretty easy for him. You know, I don't think they really were like, oh, there's any like weird instances where like something just felt like off or like you know, like there's any like racial undertones or racial issues going on. Um, I just yeah, I don't I don't think I've experienced anything like that um, so far. I don't know if anybody else has. Uh, yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah, no, that's good, man. I mean, that's, um, we hope you don't. I mean, like, like yeah. those are not, <laughs> not the, uh, but yeah, you know, I think it's important. And I think I do see a lot, um, a lot of, uh, well, actually, no, I, I don't know if I, I know of a lot of, uh, people of color if photography per se um but like in like glancing around instagram i definitely have noticed like the use of more like people of color for models and uh, yeah yeah and in those like traditional spaces as well i think uh, i've seen more uh, of an influx of like diversity whether it be um color or uh uh, body type or you know yeah um, it's definitely you know, it's good that you haven't experienced that and i hope people aren't experiencing that but, you know. yeah uh, hopefully hopefully you know, everything is smooth sailing nice you know nothing i'm like i mean not smooth sailing but like you know nice uh nothing like really like bad or like super racial happens to me trying to shoot yeah, no, no. Yeah. yeah. One thing one thing I do notice is like, you know, for for modeling, like there is like a lot of diversity, but uh I feel like there's a lot more diversity for women modeling than it is for like men. Like it's, it's kind of like the same well, like yeah, like racially, but like body type for men, I don't really see much diversity there. You right. know. That is one thing yeah, I have to like choose. Yeah. Yeah, I think men are still very much expected to have a certain a certain body type. Yeah. And all that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it's it's interesting. You know, uh, I think we, we 
I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever get them get rid of like double standards like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at least completely. But it's a start. It's a start. Yeah. You know, it, you know, one time I'd like to see Rick Ross on GQ. You know, or Rod yeah. Wade. Just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Has has you said he has been on Rick? He has been on uh, GQ. Rick Ross. Uh, yeah, he hasn't been Not, on. GQ. Who me? No, no, I was, I was you. I was saying, did you say Rick Ross was on GQ, or you'd like to see him on GQ? Yeah, I'd like to see him on there. You know, it's just okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm up stairs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think the closest we might get is probably DJ Khaled, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, it's interesting. This is definitely gonna be interesting how we uh, how we manage those spaces moving forward, and um, if we'll even see like uh transgender models and, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-binary models um, be more accepted in, into that field or be more, not necessarily accepted, but be more visible in those I think, uh, I think for like non-binary models, there's like, there's like a big uh, space for that right now. I think I was, yeah. like, I think I read an article about that, like, you know, uh, a lot of like non-binary like you know or people that just like kind of look non-binary like like they should try to start modeling now because like there's a lot of like space for that right now you know like a lot of a lot of people want that look for things i mean that has been i don't know if you remember when like Jaden Jaden smith was wearing like uh dresses and all that and people were like i wore and all that yeah yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if, if if people doing stuff like that. Do you do you think people doing stuff like that like opens the the doors for um, people in those communities to get um, those type of of gigs, or do you think it's also just like performative? I think, I think it kind of does open open the doors for that because, like after like you know, after James Smith did the like I think it was like a dress right or it was just a skirt. Uh, I think it was a skirt. I'm not. I think it was a skirt. I think it was a skirt. Yeah, and then you know, Young Thug did the the dress. I think it kind of is like you know it's like a slow process, but I feel like it's very slowly you know open the doors for like like a lot of like you know for non-binary people or you know to to be in shoots because it's you know i feel like you know trends are like like trends can be a bad thing but they, they can also be a good thing you know right. like yeah that might have been like a, a trend thing but like you know that trend does open the door for some people you know to be out there you know get jobs um as models and then eventually it becomes like kind of like a normal thing that you know makes things easier for people like uh I'm trying to think what else was like a trend that was like really good like the outcome really you know benefits people but I can't really think of it right now yeah. um, I don't know about seeing the outcome but I think some of the similar to that is like the like the Dove commercial with the Me Too movement you know like I, I agree with you. I think, you know, those type of things, regardless of if it's performative or not, it does kind of move the needle a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's um, I, I thought of it now. But, but like a great example would be like, you know, when like the Black Lives uh, Matter protests were like really like going crazy, everybody was there. Like a lot of people were doing it for a trend. Um, you know, that, that like, that wasn't cool, but like, it was also still raising awareness. Like it was still, it was still like 
becoming something that's more, you know, more the norm, like more acceptable to see. Like before Instagram was never like, you know, this happened to somebody, you know, let's, let's fundraise for this. So like, you know, let's petition, let's, let's do this. Let's, you know, email this Senator, things like that. But like now that's like, now you go on Instagram, that's like the normal thing. Like you're going to see somebody posting something that happened to somebody, you know, regardless if they're like, if it's Black Lives Matter and they're like, you know, a black person or not. Like before it was never like, oh, you'd see your white friends or you know, your Asian friends posting, you know, uh, Trayvon Martin. But now you're seeing like everybody post that. Yeah. You know? Now it's like, now you feel like it's more, it's not, it's no longer just like a black issue uh, for some things or even like it's no longer just the Asian issue. It's like, a, it's an issue, you know? Yeah. 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 Definitely, and I, mean, I think to bring it full circle, I think they, I think that's what uh, Com- Chris Cuomo was, was talking about. I mean, until other people, uh, you know, especially in this country because it's so diverse, like until yeah. people of other races, you know, see empathize, are able to empathize and you know place themselves in people, other people's shoes, like you know, it's just uh, it's just gonna be tough, right? We're not gonna see action, but because people are doing stuff like that, like it is um, affecting change, you know, and yeah. real world uh, initiatives and, and policies. So. If you could offer like any advice to any somebody who wants to be a photographer, what would you say? Um, advice if someone wants to be a photographer uh shoot as as much as you can that's honestly uh what it is and you know just if you get discouraged just go back you know get out there and go back and and shoot again and also yeah edit your photos on time i uh i have a i um you know Everybody here in this podcast, you will get your photos. You know, they're coming. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely, you know, make sure you finish your photos before you start doing too many shoots. Uh, yeah. Do you think people can get started with, with just their phones, with like iPhones and Androids and stuff like that? Uh, for sure, you can definitely just get started with your phone. Um, so that's that's really how I got started. I started taking phone pictures, and then I was like, "Let me do this with a camera," you know. So yeah, you can you can get started with a phone. You just gotta like you know learn your settings. Um, and phone like your phone can teach you lighting pretty well. Um, uh, it, it is a little different. Like it's a little bit like there's some things your phone's not gonna pick up, and like you know but there's some things your phone is going to pick up better than what you see on your camera. Your camera's still picking it up, but you're just not, you're going to see it better on your phone um, in some cases. Um, But nah, you can definitely start with anything, honestly. It just, you know, it depends on where you're trying to go. That's what's up, bro. Where do you um see yourself in like five years? Five years. Um hopefully I have uh, my little business going. Um uh nice little studio, uh a house, um and just working on photos professionally every day. You know, every other day. I gotta take that time to edit. True, true. Just, um, and I guess just working with and knowing a lot of creative people, you know, doing a lot of creative things. You find to like stay within like the DMV area or do 
playing the band Brand Out? Um, I've been looking at uh, that. That's a, it's really interesting you asked. I've been looking at you know maybe Florida or even uh, you know I'm definitely interested in uh, California and LA. I've never been to California, never been to LA, but like I hear a lot about it, and I know a lot of people that just you know up and left and moved out there. Yeah, and love it. So. Definitely. Yeah, it's tough. That's a vibe. Shout out to my Cali heads. Definitely, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the, the one good thing about working in the arts is you can literally go anywhere and, you know, um, as long as as long as your work speaks, speaks for itself, you'll be fine no matter what location you're in, you know? Yeah. So, Definitely. You know. Yeah, definitely. Not many jobs or uh, professions can have that luxury. Yeah. Uh, definitely that's that's definitely one thing like you know it's just your portfolio can really you know take you places i definitely do want to get into traveling you know at some point just do a lot of travel photography do you have any uh specific places that you would like to go um as far as like you know outside of the u.s definitely japan because oh. like it's yeah. Every time I see a picture of Japan, it just looks good. Like everything just looks aesthetic and uh, clean. Um, probably like Europe, uh, like maybe like Paris. Um, probably even Africa. Um, let's see, maybe like maybe the UK. A little iffy on that one, you know. Definitely Japan. Australia. <laughs> Australia? I, I, I couldn't. I, is, I hear about the giant animals. Yeah. 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 It's got to be in the right part. <laughs> but still, yeah. That's, uh, I couldn't, man. That's, isn't there like a spider that like, like hunts you in your house or something like? They got have spiders. They got uh, they, don't they have plus spiders? Wait. Yeah, Australia yeah, has some I still got a lot. Like creatures. It. it has creatures. It doesn't just have animals. It has creatures. Like, yeah. And then, um, what, kangaroo, they, like, stand in water, wait for you to come in so they can, like, drown you. Like, they drown animals. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, they, like yeah, there's boy. pictures of kangaroos just in water like this. Like, just. I know there's some murderers, some serial killers. Right yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, you know they're buff as shit, like yeah, yeah. yeah. no boxes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nah. If y'all haven't looked up a picture of a kangaroo like in water, like no. it looks <laughs> hilarious, but like that's some scary. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the water, yeah, nah, yeah. Yeah, nah, I'm not fucking with it. Like, and the yeah, you got it. them big ass birds. Yeah, the, uh, the, the I, feel like I feel like every animal is bigger in Australia for yes. some reason. Yes. Yeah. Like triple. Some in the water. Some's that in the water. Some, some is wrong over there, man. <laughs> that is, <laughs> yeah. That's it is beautiful. Uh, go ahead. It is beautiful. I, I will say that. It is beautiful. I've been on like Brisbane, Gold Coast, and all that. And it's really nice. Yeah, that was uh, koala bears. You know, they look koala cute, but they're vicious. Cute, but they got diseases. So. They got diseases and they're vicious. They're vicious as shit. I, I know the vicious part, but yeah, no, nah, don't get on the koala bears wrong side. Like I didn't know they were. I didn't know they were like that. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, nah, they go in. Man. Dang, damn. I feel like uh, Australia is like real life Skull Island. Like that's good. Yeah. That's what that is like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how's how's New Zealand looking? Like I think New Zealand's about the same oh, as yeah. Australia. True. Yeah. 
That's what I do want to go. I mean, I mean, I still want to go. I mean, I'll yeah, be, it's gonna yeah. be safe. We'll be safe about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna be backpacking. You know, like yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> definitely. Not. You guys got that mission. I'm a. <laughs> over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a show. I'm a show in Japan. You know, y'all can go. Um, I'll be in Japan too. Bro. It's a, it's a plan. Look, yo, soccer. And then our and then our tour Japan, like you know. Yeah. It's like safe out there too. Yeah, Cause uh, what you know how like here, if you're like a girl, you shouldn't be like walking like. Well, I mean, you can, but like you know, it's pretty dangerous to walk out or like. Yeah. 10 o'clock, 11 at night. I heard over there, women can walk down the street 11 o'clock, not have to worry about anything. Yeah, it's, it's really safe. They're one of the lowest uh, crime rates in the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the police don't even carry guns. That See, that already sounds like the place to be. That just... Yeah. <laughs> So do you have any like upcoming projects coming up? Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, be be on the lookout on Instagram, um, and maybe like probably just Instagram right now, IGTV, okay. TikTok. Uh, I'm gonna branch out to YouTube once I get like you know some more like full length projects. I feel like YouTube's for like your like long videos, like so yeah, like, long like vlogs, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. Definitely be on the lookout. Um. On Instagram, by the next two three months. You know. Yeah. I saw that video um, directed with Ishma. That was that was dope. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. The the music video uh, kind of thing, right? Yeah. Different. Um, we just. Yeah. Uh, that was the one with uh, the wolf, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was tough. I really enjoyed that. that yeah. Tough. We just finished. Uh. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was just saying I really liked it. I really liked it. That was tough. I appreciate that. Um, we just finished working on um, something else uh, recently. But like, I don't know if it's like top secret, so I don't want to say it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to speak on it, so I just... <laughs> sure. we, we can't wait to see, see more work. You know? uh, definitely, I... What uh, the last question for me about about videography? What what world do you enjoy more? Like, do you enjoy photography more or videography more, or does it not matter to you? Uh, I don't know if it's like a phase where I go to one to the other, but like right now, I'm definitely enjoying um, videography more as I get back into it because. I don't know the process behind it. Like editing pictures is cool. Like I like editing pictures, but like when I'm editing a video, it's just a lot more fun to see what I just put together. You know, like the process is a lot more fun. Um, I just like using Final Cut more than I like Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, I don't know what it is about it. Maybe that, that it moves or like, you know, it's, I feel like there's a lot more playing around I can do with a video than I can do with a picture. It's just. Yeah, I, I, I see. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it could just be, you know, in phases, like, you know, because there was one point where I just loved, you know, editing video, I mean, editing pictures. But um, right now, I'm definitely like, I'm feeling videography a little bit more. So it's just a lot more you can do with it and then I also really do like music is like definitely like one of my like favorite things the first thing I do in the morning is you know hop on Spotify you know brush my teeth um just the music for like a good like 30 40 um as I get ready so I feel like you can do a lot more music and videography would you ever be back more into like creating concept for videos and directing like, oh, I, I, that's definitely like something i want to get into because i think what really 
something really like I like. I don't know if it's weird, but like I I like literally like for some days I'll just sit and watch music videos like back to back and just you know get ideas and stuff like that. So it's definitely like one of my like one thing that I'm trying to really get back into. That's tight. That's good. So what's something like one song that everybody's been listening to this week? Uh, I'm not gonna flex. I went back and I was listening to. Uh, well, I've been listening to a couple of things. I've been listening to Reason Without, um, some Tupac, Me Against the World, and Mac Valley. Okay. I went back and I was listening to to Damn also because it was the four year anniversary. Okay. Um, yeah. Same. Same. I was yeah. listening to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what about y'all? Um, damn as well. Um, then I was listening to Chloe's new song, so that was that was dope. So, uh, I think this week, uh, definitely, I, I listened to two songs off the uh, the Young Thugs, uh, Slime Language Two. Yeah. Um, I think it was like Solid featuring Drake, and then that was, that was several drinks. Yeah. Schlatty, um, I think, I think Gunna's on there, and Young yeah. Doug, yeah. and then I think the five-year anniversary for Louis V. Versus the World, um, and then I think other than that, really just some, some uh, uh, Dominic Feige, uh, Brent Baez, and Brent Fies is always just right there. You know, like on the top where Spotify yeah, has like your, your like yeah, six yeah. most like recent, yeah, that. And I listened to a lot of uh, Lil Yachty recently. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think he's making a comeback though. Yeah. Who, Yachty? I've only heard like, I think the new joint Kodak or whatever. Oh, uh, about it. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of he went quiet for a little bit. Like I know he was doing like commercials and all that, but yeah. Um, I don't know if. Uh, well, I don't know. I wouldn't know if he he's been making music, but I don't, I haven't heard any music right. in a while, um, or of any music either. So it's good to see him back on on his on his stuff. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's one thing I love about music. It's just different time of day, you know, however you're feeling, throw some on, you know. Some days, I'll, you know, I'll just put on, like, a little Brent when I'm just chilling, about to go do something, like, you know, crazy or, like, you know, something I need high energy for. I'll, you know, I'll throw on a little young boy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just to get the, you know, energy up. Right. Yeah, I definitely feel like music and like photography, like they go hand in hand, like complement each other. Yeah, I, that is definitely like one thing with shoots, like like noticing the difference between like how a shoot will go when there's no music playing and how it'll go when there's music playing. Like people are like, oh, I don't know how to pose, I don't know how to do this, and then yeah. next thing you know, you start playing, you know, anything. They'll just start busting out model poses like they were just on GQ last week. Like, uh, definitely get interesting. Somebody should do like an experiment on that to see, like, oh, yeah, it's just music don't be Yeah, yeah, but I appreciate you for coming on. Right? I've been trying to have you on for a while, so definitely look forward. Yeah, I am. Back. <laughs> back on. No, especially with the, with the whole crew. 
working on it. Uh, yeah, just let me know. I'm always down. Um, my schedule's not always free, but like, it's like free but not free. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely, will be reaching out to you for like you know some some photos, photo shoots, and other collab vlogs and stuff like that this summer. So I'll definitely. Hey, let me know. That is. So I just got some new equipment. I'm trying to use it. So hey, it's, what's about that? It's <laughs> hey. But it's been a real Sam Sam Masus. All right, so Gil Yao, uh, Nick, and on Instagram it's tropical right now. This has been the Creators Club Podcast. Catch y'all next week. Yes, sir.